Hi there, my name is Thomas Eriksson and I am the author of the book Surrounded by Idiots. I am here to let you in on a little secret. There are people in your life who you would like to be. Strong people, decisive people, confident people, people you admire because they are so powerful and in full control of themselves. And the situation, the meeting, the room, everything. At the same time as you would like to be one of them, you're also kind of a little tiny bit afraid of them. Because in all their superiority, they are also a bit dominant, somewhat aggressive, and they seem to be winning all the time. Now, how annoying is that? It's complicated. Admiration and a bit fear at the same time. Because even though you want to be one of them, you're also a little bit intimidated by them and all their strengths. This is actually the type most people come to me and say they are without being one. Hmm. They want to be one of those people, but they're not. You also sometimes would like to be that decisive, that confident, that fast. But then again, at the end of the day, even though you in your darkest moments tell yourself that you are a little bit like this, in reality, you're not. In reality, you are just you. Now, there's nothing wrong with being you. It's just that you are a different kind of person. I have a confession to make. I also would like to be one of them, but uh, I'm not. Instead, I am also just me. Now, who are these people? Where do we find them? Where can we see them? How can we learn something interesting from them? And in that case, what? How can we get to know them? My friend, let me introduce you to the Red People. These are the people who, according to DISC theory, is extroverted and task-oriented. Decisive, persuasive, goal-oriented, result-focused as you cannot believe. Very, very, very competitive. Don't play games with these people. They will try to win regardless what. They are fast. They are so fast. They are sometimes faster than the speed of light. My name is Flash. No, they're not faster than the speed of light, but they can speak really quickly and they can speak really, let's say, crystal clearly, if that even is the word. Now, about communication, about using words. They might not use as many words. They would like you to use fewer words and they most likely would like you to actually just shut up and go away and do whatever and don't distract them because they are busy 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 they are persuasive very decisive and my friend they are fast fast bam 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 you know wow. a friend of mine a consultant a super consultant super good salesman excellent businessman he gets this thought in his head and off he goes and just do it Procrastination? No, 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 no. Thought, action, all the time. This guy, he could sell anything to almost anyone with just his powerful presence in the room. You have seen these people, they just entered the room and you feel like, ah, oh, now we can begin. Because here comes confidence, here comes somebody who actually know what he is doing, at least he told me so. What he does, he just sits down at the table and saying to people, this is what we are going to do. And this is really good because it gets people to kind of... <sighs> He's in control. Great. He's calm, but also unimaginable. Confident. He looked like he knew everything. The clients, oh, how they loved him. Oh, he came back to them so fast. You know, decision makers are usually very busy, busy. They don't, they can't wait a week for an email to, to arrive. No, no, no. How they love him. Anyways, this guy obviously knew that. So he got back to them immediately with something. What? Didn't even matter, just something. He just got back to them and said, I'm going to solve this. Then he sat down at his desk, trying to figure things out. 
And if the first idea didn't hold, then he just brought up another one, and another one, and then another one. You see, that's the beauty of red people. They don't give up easily. They work harder than most. Yes, they do. Sure, he had promised the client everything should be just fine. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Because the red people, they are actually risk takers. And that is one reason why we admire them. We also would like to take more risks in life because we know that's gonna take us somewhere. But it's also kind of, you know, risky. <laughs> How about that? It's really risky to take risks, you know, so you better stay put. But not the red ones. Oh no, no, they just get going and see what's gonna happen. What's the worst things that possibly could happen? Well, we don't know unless we try. That is the red perspective. Boom. That's the beauty of it. They just do. Thought. Action. Let's be serious for a while. Let's talk about honesty. Do you like honesty? Come on, come on, you can be honest. Okay. What kind of stupid question is that? Of course you like honesty. Who doesn't? We all prefer when people don't lie to us, right? Right? And here the Reds take the lead because they will tell you the truth as it is, meaning as they think it is, because it's gonna be their truth, but still, they won't hold back. If you ask your sister, your red sister, what do you think about my new jacket? She will tell you. She might say th something like, what were you thinking? I hope you kept the receipt. And here is where the reds take the lead. They will tell you as it is, meaning what they think. Let's say you ask your red colleague at work, what do you think about my report? He will tell you. You know, it sucks. This is really bad. How were you thinking? Don't say you've already sent it to the management. Now go away. That is the problem with honesty. It can backfire. The truth can be cruel. If you really don't want the truth, then don't ask the reds. Of course, there is a downside to all of this. The friend I told you about just now, he called me a couple of months ago and then he told me he had lost his driving license again. So I asked him, what have you done this time? Of course, I knew, but I wanted him to say, he told me he had done 168 on the road that allows only 90. Now this is kilometers per hour, so take it easy. I asked him, were you in a hurry? And then he said, interesting, the police had the same question. Huh. So what did you tell them? Well, the truth, of course. I said, no. <laughs> then, then, I don't get it. Why did you go so fast? So firstly, he said, it was close to midnight. So you can change the video back there. And then he said, I was the only one out there. There was nobody but me. Okay, there was one other car, the wrong one, and they caught me. It turned out the police had chased him for 25 kilometers. He had seen their lights in the rear view mirror. But as a red person, he said to himself, oh, somebody would like to compete. Let's speed up. Let's push the pedal to the metal. When the police finally succeeded to make him stop. It's two of them, both angry as but you can imagine. They were mad. Yelling at him, you're not going anywhere, buddy. We have checked you up. This is not the first time this year. It could have stopped there. He could have just taken the ticket and went away. But no, there is no challenge in that. He had to do something because the red people. So he said to the police, can it get any worse? Now, how many of you out there would actually ask that question to two furious cops? And they said, no, it cannot. We're taking your driving license away and you can call a cab and get the hell out of here. Now go away. So it can't get any worse? No, 168. Ha! I did 200 downhill over there. Ha! I win. Yay. And I actually asked him, well, what did you exactly, what did you win? And he said, I don't know. Just a feeling of they didn't get me for 200, only 168. And that must, that's not very much. Again, I'm not defending. I'm only reporting one of the maybe not so flattering things about red behavior. Welcome to life in the fast lane. <laughs> now, wrapping things up, would you still like to be one of them? Well, maybe you do and maybe you don't, but if you still do, maybe you don't have to go all the way. Maybe you can just take a couple of the red-ish behaviors and turn them into yours when needed in certain situations. If you like that, I will give you three tips on how you actually can use the red behavior in certain specific situations where it could be especially beneficial for you to actually 
go red is kind of so no. So here it comes. Number one, set goals. Tough goals, clear goals, goals most impossible to reach, but that is how the Reds are doing it. They set goals, they aim for the stars, and then they actually will reach the rooftops because they still try to aim for the stars. Well, you get it. Number two, plan for more action. Make sure your calendar, your schedule is full of action-oriented things. The red people, they don't sit around and talk about things. They don't sit around and think about things. They do things. Remember, success comes to those who act, not those who thinks or knows things. You have to do things. And here, the reds are leaders. Trust me because they do more than you and I. So don't forget that. Number three, work harder. The red bus works hardest. They work the most. Now remember this, they don't do everything correct. I understand that, but they do more. They work harder and they don't give up just because it feels like life is treating them a little bit badly. I understand if that can be the case. In your case, it has been in my case. However, they don't give up and neither should you. So there you go. If you like, you can go red. If you don't like it, you can stay exactly where you are, which is absolutely fine. That is totally okay. Mostly it is up to you. I don't think I can put it in any better way. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Until next time. Whoa.